you know, obviously after watching it on uh, Sunday as a staff, you know, it was a good win. It was a big win. Um, you know, I thought our players and our coaches did a great job of one preparation, but also the in-game adjustments um, that you have to do in any football game. But I thought we did uh, a really good job at that. Um, a lot of good in all three phases. Uh, a lot of good things to point out. But, you know, we continuously so will make sure we focus on the, the areas of improvement. That's what we got to continuously do is uh, continue to find ways to improve, correct the mistakes, and uh, continue in trying to take this program to a, another level. Um, the message to the team will, will be is consistency is the key. All right, is consistency is is what it will take. Um, you know, it's it's really not hard to sacrifice um, one day, one moment, one play. You know, but consistency is is greater than just temporary sacrifice. Um, you know, we got to continuously be obsessed with going from good to great. Uh, that's what it takes to reach your full potential and, and have a constant strive for perfection. Uh, this must be a consistent thing for our program. So we'll get back to work. Uh, again, I'm very happy uh, with the outcome and the performance of our team. Um, but I also know there's a lot of room for improvement. So we'll have to continue to, to work on those things. A uh, player of the game on offense was Jeremiah Love. Defense was Drake Bowen. And special teams was David Sherwood. And scout player of the week were on offense, Anthony Rezac. Defense, Trey Reeder and special teams, Alex Whitman. Uh, a couple injury updates. Uh, Mitch Jeter will still be questionable. Um, we'll see if he can give it a go. He tried to, to warm up, but wasn't able to, you know, be his, you know, feel like he was able to contribute in a way he needed to. And so uh, he'll still be questionable. Uh, Billy Shrouth will be available, but uh, in a role that's to be determined. Uh, that'll be based off this week's practice, so not ex uh, not a hundred percent sure what the role will be yet. Uh, but he will be available um, as he returns back to play. So moving forward to Navy, uh, six and O team. Uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our program. <clears throat> they're putting up big numbers offensively, um, and you know their their offensive scheme is is enhanced from what we saw last year um, as we prepared for them last season. Uh, they've really done a great job of enhancing what they do offensively. Um, they've been tremendous in the red zone on offense and defense and done a great job in terms of uh, creating turnovers and protecting the football. And they're really good in the turnover margin battle. Um, they're playing great complimentary football. They play hard. Um, they're playing sound. And uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our program. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. First question on your right, second row, Tom Noy. Marcus, what allowed special teams to do what it did on Saturday where it was just making plays and waves? Yeah, it was uh, probably the best overall performance by our special team. Um, I think we faked a field goal, uh, faked a punt, blocked a field goal. Um, I think two kickoffs, tackles inside the 20, and then uh, we, we recovered an onside kick. And so, you know, a couple of those um, fakes were uh, things that we prepared for. Um, the punt was a fake we, we prepared for for a couple of weeks. We were looking for a chance to steal a, a possession. We knew um, we were going to be limited into the, the possessions offensively. Um, but the preparation, the, the confidence that was earned um, from me in practice to, to call them and to say, let's do it, um, it comes from the way we executed in practice and what we saw on film. Uh, but it was it was it was good to see our our special teams group really perform um, at a high level and have some impact plays. We got to be more consistent at punter. Um, there's room to grow, you know. And I'm going to focus on those things. We got to be more consistent at punter, um, and uh, you know, we will, we will. Going back to your days as a position coach, when a when a position like special teams contributes the way they did, wh what does that do for like the confidence, the psyche of the room? moving forward to, to where it's just like everybody's more, maybe a little bit more, more focused, more energized? Yeah, I think, you know, special team is one of those unique phases that everybody on the team's involved with. And, uh, you know, you go from the O-line and D-line and talking about field goal and field goal block, and, and it's something that brings the entire team together. It's not offense and defense. And so um, it truly has an impact on the game. Um, 
you can see when you practice something, especially a fake, the, the players want to see you run it. You know, I, I met with uh, a guy that didn't travel on Sunday, and he's like, Coach, every time you guys went on punt, I was going to see if you guys are going to run the fake. And we went crazy when you guys did. And so it ignites a team, um, and uh, it's an important phase. And Coach Biagi's done a great job of getting the, the, those phases, those groups to play at a high level. Front row on your left, Jack Sobel. Marcus, what what is what is about this Navy offensive scheme that, that that's made it so difficult to defend the season? Well, I think what you see is that um, I don't know what the percentage was last year, but this year they're about forty five percent in the gun, and that's something that I know it wasn't that percentage last year. They were some in the gun, but um, not in the gun, and so. You know, it's not your traditional just every play quarterback under center triple option. It is uh, it's some type of option, but they can do it out of gun under center. Um, they have some good playmakers. And the thing I notice is they play with clarity. They play fast. They do what they do. Um, and, and that's something that we're going to have to make sure that we truly prepare for. And the quarterback, Blake Horvath, what, what kind of challenge does he, does he present? He, he makes really good decisions. Um, he's a good decision maker. If if you give him one read, he's going to do exactly what he's supposed to do. If you give him another read, he's going to do exactly what he's supposed to do. Um, he's a threat with his legs, but he's also been doing really well in the pass game. And so uh, he's experienced, um, and uh, he, he's doing a great job leading that offense. Third row on your right, Tim Priester. Coach, as it relates to the Navy offense, you're you're a little bit young at defensive end. You're young at linebacker, you're young at corner, and you've got a young safety too. So, what are the what are the concerns in, in facing this style of the de- uh, offense, rather? Yeah, I think you know the old adage that when you did play triple option teams was it was it was almost opposite. Where I usually say it, usually say I don't want to play football. You got to play football, but you know. I don't want to get caught up by playing just football um, defensively, but you got to be disciplined, right? You got to be disciplined. And um, it's really hard to simulate and practice the speed at which they run their offense. So it can take a little time, um, especially for guys that have not faced that type of offense, to realize the speed at which they run their offense. And then when all of a sudden you're trying to adjust to the speed, you can lose your eyes on put keeping your eyes on your assignment. And so we have to be disciplined. We got to practice um, until we can't get it wrong. But then we got to understand it's going to take a little bit of time to catch up to game speed on Saturday. You've been um, much more aggressive on fourth down. The, your first two years as head coach, you didn't go for it as frequently. And you were very aggressive in the fourth quarter Saturday with a with a 17 point lead. Was that were you trying to finish Georgia Tech off? There was speculation, uh, especially by one of the broadcasters, that it was it was about style points for the committee. You know, moving forward, was it a combination of those or or something beyond that? No, it was just you know at that moment, um, you know when we we I, I think you're talking about the, the the fake punt and the fake field goals. Like at that moment, uh, I felt like that was the right decision. Um, really, regardless of the score at that point, it was like. We want to steal possession. We're we're gonna we're in a position where we can't go for the field goal. Um, I really don't want to punt in this situation. If we can fake it here and they give us the look, let's do it. And and that's why we called it. I felt good about that play at that moment. Um, you know, again, I tell our players all the time, like the future's uncertain. So why spend time worrying about making a decision today about what the committee or somebody else is gonna think? I just felt like in that moment, that's what we needed to do, and uh, that's why we called it. Up the middle aisle on the left, Sean Stiers. Hey, Marcus. Uh, Billy Shrouth, you talked about him being available this week. Just kind of curious what, you know, maybe his last week or two has looked like in terms of what he's been able to do and, you know, just kind of what markers he's, he's looking for. Yeah, he was able to get some uh, some scouted periods uh, last week. That was his first time he was able to do actual, actual football um, practice like practice actually football stuff not doing rehab uh, but it was limited in terms of what he was able to do and um, this week it, it would increase more uh, but again his role is still to be determined and that you, you talk about simulating the Navy quarterback you've obviously had some uh, some local guys over the last few years you know former option quarterbacks and that kind of thing you got another one who's beefed up into a fullback 
Bear, obviously. But what, who, who are the scout team quarterback or quarterbacks this week? And just sort of what are you looking for from them? You're asking me if Buckner's going to be the scout team quarterback. I'm sure. Um, he'll, he'll, he's going to get some scout team quarterback reps um, along with Anthony Rezac, who's been the scout team quarterback um, ever since CJ uh, has been out. And so both of those guys will, will simulate the, uh, the Navy quarterback. Just across the aisle, Tim O'Malley. Coach, you, could, you got kind of confronted this in your first year here as a coordinator. And, and Brian Kelly mentioned a few times, their offense will always have more adjustments to their own offense than your defense can have for their offense. It, it makes sense. How, how do you and Al Gold approach that? I mean, how did you do it last year as compared to this year when it's in season and you don't have as much time to prepare for it? Yeah, I think we've been preparing for it um, since fall camp. You know, you, you, you're intentional about having Navy periods on certain days um, during fall camp. We attacked it again during the bye week. And uh, so we had a good base for what we – a foundation for what we've uh, planned on doing. And we've enhanced it, obviously, since Sunday uh, when we got together and started game planning. Um, you know, they do. They, they're going to have adjustments. Um, we just have to feel like – we have more than just one defense to, to try to defend them. And uh, they've done a great job of not getting behind the sticks, right, is, is staying um, in the flow of what they want their offense to do. So we got to continue to try to create some negative plays. And so um, there's an aggressiveness that we have to play with in terms of tactically, right? And I'm not just saying a mentality, but also how we call it um, and some of our design defenses. So um, it's going to be a little bit of both, right? And try to get them off schedule a little bit, and uh, but also make sure we, we're sound in what we're doing. And back to the, the previous preparations of Navy, I've always been curious, what does that look like in August camp on bye weeks as compared to this week where it's obviously so intense? How do you, how do you kind of work your first unit defense into what Navy's doing with your scout team offense? Um, you know, part of it is, is the fundamentals of playing a triple option offense. That's how you start back in fall camp and, and – hey, what is our base rules um, and our fundamentals of how we're going to play? Because it's differently than how you, you play versus a normal offense. Um, and and probably bye week was a little bit ramped up in terms of more scheme, more looks uh, that we have saw the, the first couple weeks of the season um, from their offense. And then now this week is it's full go, right? It's, it's the plans intact. You still got to start with a little bit of fundamentals because, again, the way you defend them, the fundamentals of the way you defend this type of offense is different than a normal week. Um, but now you got to go full speed in pads and uh, simulate it as best you can. Third row on your left, Pete Byrne. Hey, Marcus. It seems like week by week the offense is slowly becoming more efficient and a little bit more kind of certain of their identity. Where, where do you feel like their overall evolution is and how much more growth would you like to see there? It's been tremendous. From week one to, to now, the growth of our offense, the growth of our, um, our staff with the players has been really, really good. Um, and, and they're performing really well. There's still so much more uh, out there to continue to improve. Uh, the big thing for offense is, is consistency, right? We've got to continue to be consistent um, on every single play. And... Uh, that goes back to our preparation and, and executing on Saturdays. But there's more. There's more, and they believe it. Um, that's the most importantly, that you have to believe there's more. And then if you do, then you're willing to put the work in. So I'm so pleased with um, the growth and the performance, but I'm also motivated knowing that we, we still got a lot of room to continue to improve. One area where there's probably more would be opening drives. Um, that's been slow for you guys. I feel like a couple years ago, you, you made starting with Ascension Urgency a priority, and over time that kicked in. Is that something you, you feel like you need to do now, or have you been able to put a finger on why the, the openers have been not as good? Yeah, I, I kind of went back and looked and said, okay, you know, again, I'm a, a person that I like to evaluate the plays, but I wanted to take a look and say, okay, like have – What's been the issues? You know, offensively, we've actually done a really good job on our opening drives. I think we, I wrote down, we're 57% we're scoring drive rate on, on the first drive, which is like 20th in, in college football. Um, offensively, done a really good job. And then the three punts that we've had on the opening drive has resulted where the offense starts, I think, in the minus 37 or, or, be, or, or even farther back. Um, but what we got to do is be better defensively, um, you know, 
I think we're 57 percent in terms of the opposing team's offense scoring, which is, you know, bottom quarter of, of college football. Um, so we really got to be better there on that first drive. But again, what you're seeing as you go back and evaluate it is a lot of different things um, on that first drive that you probably haven't seen on film. You know, you got the same thing from Georgia Tech, some different looks, some different personnel um, that we haven't seen. But the adjustments have been crazy. I think from the second through the fourth quarter, um, our defense is, is number one in college football in yards per play. And so it's a credit to the adjustments that they're making. Um, but we we got to continue to find ways to be better on that first series. Like, that's the area of improvement um, that we can really focus on. And special teams got to be better. We had a muff punt uh, versus Miami, Ohio. The, we, we fumbled the opening kickoff return versus Louisville, which is detrimental to a team, you know. So, listen, I want to be number one in the country on the very first drive. Um, on all three phases, right? Um, but you have to go back and evaluate, okay, what play, what is it, you know, what play of the last game calls the, 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 the outcome uh, that we got? And, and that's what we got to continue to focus on and attack those plays. Um, you know, if we, if, if we can guarantee that every practice, if we went out and said, okay, it's opening drive of the game, let's make it competitive, that that would get the result we want, we would do it. Um, we've done that before, but we got to continue to just fix those plays, like fix the issues that come about um, in those opening drives. Front row on your right, Eric Hansen. Hey, Coach. Um, with it being fall break, I, I would imagine the 20-hour rule isn't in effect. Um, how does this week look different? And then how do you balance that with these guys are creatures of habit and you want to keep some of that? Yeah, um, you can't practice them for 40 hours now because they don't have school. But um, you can utilize some of that off time for maybe non-physical preparation, right? And so the ability to have our guys watch an extra film, the ability to get some walkthroughs in are, are going to be crucial. Uh, the physical aspect is the physical aspect. We have to make decisions in our plan to make sure we're ready to go on Saturday. Um, there is some consistency in terms of the physical preparation, but um, the ability to have them in for more meetings, the ability to have player-led meetings sometimes um, is something that we have to take advantage of, and we will. I think because of the pesky ankle, Jordan Faison ha still has more receptions in the Sun Bowl than he does this whole season. I know that he was running around out there, was blocking on some run plays. When he gets to be the Jordan Faison that you know that he can be, what can he do to help this offense? What is your hope that he contributes? I mean, he is uh, – the impact he made on that game to the people – in the football program is tremendous, right? When you watch the plays that he was in, the way he blocked, um, some of the things he did, the routes he did run, just because he didn't get the ball, I mean, he was, I mean, he performed at an extremely high level, but didn't get the the balls, didn't get the 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 stat line that really says to maybe the outsiders that um, it was a great performance. But man, he he really performed really well. Um, He's healing. He's getting back to uh, the guy he was before he got injured. And we'll continue to find ways to try to get him the ball. Um, but, again, sometimes those outcomes are a reflection of what the defense is doing and, hey, what decision is made at quarterback and those type of things. But you, know, you, ask, you talk about a guy that was asked to do this role and he couldn't accomplish it at a higher level than he did on Saturday. Front row on your left, Tyler Horka. Normally when you guys are going against an option offense and you have two sophomores and a true freshman linebacker, we ask you, are they ready for that? But it seems like those guys, Drake Bowe and Jaden Osbury and uh, Kingston, they've gotten better every game this year. So how rare is that to have guys that are so young and you can see them get better week to week? Yeah. I mean, one's a credit to recruiting. Did a good job of evaluating, recruiting really good players, but um, they're developing uh, they're, they're becoming more comfortable. They have great God-given abilities, but Coach Bull is doing a great job of developing those skill sets uh, to really show up on Saturdays. 
Um, and they're committed to it, too. Like, those guys are committed to it. So, again, this game will require to make sure you're disciplined with your eyes, you understand your fit, then you got to use your God-given abilities. And uh, those three guys and, and some other young guys will, will make sure they'll do that. An older guy, Jack Kaiser, thought he played a really good game against Georgia Tech as well. How much does it help to have him in that room preparing to play an opponent that he's gone against so many times? Yeah, he can obviously um, spread his wisdom to some of those guys that haven't played against a triple option team. Uh, but he's a problem solver. He is a problem solver when he's out there. He's a, the, the ability for him to communicate and get other people lined up to, to communicate and tell somebody um, what's happening is, is tremendous. You know, my challenge to Jack is, is to I keep reminding him he's gone in a couple games. Like, this is it. Now you got to challenge that room to step up. Like, you can't always make all the calls and the checks. Like, your job is to leave that room better than you found it. And you got to make sure some of those young guys are, are seeing it the way you've seen it, can make those checks um, and, not are, and are not always dependent on you to do it. Uh, but it, it is a level of comfort for a coach and for those young guys to have a guy like Jack in that room. Front row on your right, Pete Sampson. Yeah. Marcus, you guys played an incredibly – physical game defensively on Saturday and I was I was interested in how much you emphasized <clears throat> especially with the linebackers not just making the tackle but like driving through the man yeah. um, and then what kind of cu a cumulative effect that can have during the course of a game yeah it is uh, I'm interesting you noticed that that was something as we evaluate the game like that was the best our backers have played in terms of point of contact um, driving guys back um, and it's huge because now you're talking about third and short situations. It gives our, our defense a chance to say, okay, fourth down. Don't give them a three first down, right? And if you can drive guys back and limit the point of contact, that is, is, is huge because we've had a lot of success defensively on fourth and short this year. And a lot of that has to do with on third down, just at the point of contact, you're not giving up that extra yard. And so that is a huge effect um, that as you look at the game, it has a cumulative effect on the, the opponent physically, but also mentally when you're able to get them in the short yard situations to stop them. Uh, after the game, I think Leonard Moore was asked about, you know, going behind early and sort of keeping your composure because he's a younger guy and you, you reference being better out of the gate defensively. But, like, I mean, is there an upside to that? Because at, at some point you're going to be down in the third quarter of a game this season, and the guys have sort of played through that before. Yeah, I don't. I know prefer. I'm not asking you if you'd like to go behind early in the game. <laughs> yeah, I don't prefer to go behind, to get behind early in the game, but it's a great reminder. I told him before the game that, you know, I don't want to say this in a negative way, but like you're equipped with weapons and tools. And how foolish are we to have these tools and weapons and not use them? So when you get behind early, there's a tool, bam, stay in a moment. Don't worry about the score. Don't worry about the outcome. Stay in the moment and win this play. And so I think when you get behind in a situation like that, it's a great reminder, hey, use those tools that you have in this moment to not worry about the last play, not worry about the next play, focus on this play. And uh, if we can continue to get our guys to do that, no matter if we're up or down, like stay right here, stay in the moment, um, that is going to be something that pays dividends for this football program. Staying on the right side in the back row, Drew Mentock. Kind of a follow-up on that and with Leonard Moore specifically, how have you seen that ability in him to kind of move on from the last play? I know we've seen him kind of be a part of giving up some big plays, but for a guy so young to kind of be able to kind of let go of that and just refocus, what have you seen from him there? Yeah, I mean, at that position, you have to truly, more than any, probably quarterback, but but at that position, you got to have a short-term memory. you got to let – good or bad play, good previous play go, and really focus on this play. And, and, you know, Leonard is a guy from the moment he's got into here has had a tremendous ability. Um, you know, part of my message to the team is, is, you know, at the snap of a finger, you can be thrust into the spotlight. Um, and then everybody outside of our program can recognize some of the individual accomplishments that you've, that you've really have shown. But – the first thing you have to do is earn the trust and respect of your teammates, right? That way before you get a chance to go do it on that field. And Leonard's a guy that has done that from the moment he's gotten here. So when all of a sudden you're thrust into the spotlight because BMO goes down, everybody else will see it now that you're a heck of a player and you're doing some great things. But 
everybody in our football program has known through those that trust that he's built from the time he's gotten here. So uh, he's going to continue to get better, continue to do great things. He has the right mentality, um, the right coach, and uh, he's been blessed with, with some good genetics too. Up the middle on your left, Mike Berardino. Marcus. Um, Adon Schuler going back home this weekend, and, and uh, I wondered it, this week in particular, what kind of reminders do you have for him in terms of eye discipline, in terms of wrapping up because he can deliver the big hit, but he also has missed a few tackles that mm -hmm. uh, are uncharacteristic. Yeah, there's every week that matters, um, especially this week. Uh, eye discipline is going to be so crucial because this week, uh, more than any week, man, the lack of eye discipline can truly uh, result in a, an explosive play. And this offense has, has really, I, I don't know the stats, but I know they've had more explosive plays probably than anybody else in the country. I mean, they've had a lot of explosive plays, which I'm sure goes back to a lack of eye discipline. And so tackling is going to be crucial. We've got to practice it, and uh, we've got to have great eye discipline. Um, Eli Raritan is a guy who, uh, maybe just because of his stature, it always seems like there's more to be gotten out of him. What kind of conversations do you have with him, or do, what what is still there that's untapped as in the passing game? Yeah, it's funny you, you say that because we we talked about our tight ends in our meeting on Sunday, and you know we felt like this was Mitch's best game. Um, you know, as he's come back to play, Cooper still recovering. He's still getting back to. The, the coup he was before the injury. But, you know, we, we feel like Eli might be one of the most complete tight ends we have in terms of what he does in the run game and the pass game. He is uh, he is really becoming a complete tight end. Uh, I don't know how many catches. He might have one or two catches. But he's really running the routes the way you want him to run them. Um, he's blocking better than he ever has and is really helping our offense and our tight ends room. So I could not speak any more highly of Eli in terms of his progression um, and, and obviously where he's going to continue to go. Our last question opportunity on your right, Jackson Neal. Marcus, <clears throat> Riley Leonard had an early interception in that game but came back to have a pretty efficient day. What did you see from him responding from that? I love it. I love it. I mean, He'll be the first one to tell you, probably predetermine that, pre that decision to throw that ball before he saw the rotation of the coverage. And it was the first, he kind of laughed as he came off the field like, I, got, I know what I did. And uh, the confidence, man, he's got a lot of confidence because, you know, he, I think he, went, he, he gets on the field after that interception and throws 12 straight completions. Right, we throw twelve straight completions, and I just you're going to make mistakes, especially when we want you to be confident in your decisions, and uh, you know throw the ball in, in tight windows. Uh, you have to be able to respond the way he did, and uh, that's just a reflection of the confidence, um, the ability to understand the game plan, uh, and to trust uh, the coaching that he's had. So, really proud of the way he responded from that that interception. And then a top 25 matchup this weekend. What does it mean to have this rivalry be, you know, one of the biggest games of a college football weekend? Well, it's awesome, man. It's uh, again, it's it's a great rivalry that goes back many years, and there's a lot of history behind it. Uh, it's just a credit to the to the job coach has done there. Um, you know, Coach Newberry has done it with that program from where it was last year when we played them to where it's now, where it is now to be six and zero. Oh, and doing the things it's doing, uh, it's a credit to to their program. So I love it. We're looking forward to a great challenge, right? And and you know to play a six and zero team as the head coach is it's a you'd much rather do that than play a team that's zero and six. And because it doesn't take much to 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 motivate your guys, right? They they know the opponent, they know the challenge we have ahead of us. So looking forward to the opportunity. Uh, should be a great matchup and. Uh, We'll get, we'll get back to preparation and get ready for it. Thank you, Coach Freeman. All right. Thank you, guys.